Hey everybody, Corey again here with Vice and Villainy. Um, after a couple of initial comments on the first video regarding the uh, setup of Foundry on the cloud, uh, it seems that there was a, a couple things going on here. So what we're going to do is uh, go through and see if I can recreate those problems and, and we'll just see what happens. So I'm going to try to shoot for this in one video. I'll try not to edit it. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, so I've got a new instance up I just created. Um, so I'll end up deleting this again, especially because I am going to try to actually install software on this, and I don't want to use my license twice. So I am going to delete this foundry. Don't worry. Um, so let's try pulling here and see what we get. because it's not there. So I'll just type it wget. zip and then I've got this will pull from here. Arrow 403 forbidden. Okay, so that is one of the errors that was coming up. Um and that's because, for whatever reason, it won't let you pull from that site. So, a couple things we can try here. It's interesting as it shows the file there, but there's probably nothing in it. Let's just see. Unzip foundry vtt.zip. Yeah, it's empty. Okay, so let's try a different way here. What could we do? Uh, w get. Oh. Let's just paste that. See what that comes in. Missing URL. Okay, so it doesn't like that URL. Let me go look up real quick in my email and see if I have anything else that I can grab. Okay, so <laughs> the workaround, because I think this is um, the only way I got it to work previously was because I was a patron before they released it publicly and I had a different link and it allowed me to go through the process that way. The workaround is here. So you're going to need to download something called WinSCP. I'll put the link in the description. Um, and what this is, is effectively a GUI, uh, to access the storage in the cloud. So it allows you to drag and drop. It's actually kind of useful. Um, I use it all the time with, uh, with Foundry, so I don't have to manually upload one map at a time. I can drag multiples in or tokens and stuff like that. I can also take everything off there and move it back to my local machine. So I have a backup. Um, in case something happens with Amazon. So WinSCP, when you load it, it's going to come up with something like this. Uh, you're going to want a new site. File protocol is FF SFTP. Host name is going to be the host name that you find down here, this public DNS. So you can just copy that to your clipboard um, and then paste it here. Port number is still going to be 22. Username is EC2 user, no password. And then what you're going to do is go into advanced, click on advanced, skip all the way down here to SSH authentication, and you're going to reuse that same um, uh, putty file that you created. So you're going to come in here, going to put the one that you created here, the PPK file. Okay, click login. And then it's going to give you access here. What you have on your left is what's on your computer. What you have on the right is the uh, cloud, your cloud storage on Amazon. So you should have Foundry Data and Foundry VTT. Um, in here, you'll see an empty zip file that I tried to do before. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And now what we're going to do is... When you request your file, you should have gotten uh, an email. It links... To your profile and that gives you your license and it gives you your uh, a link to download 
So the links that I had in here before, um, the Linux one is this one. So I'm going to take this back and I'm going to grab it here. It's going to let me download it. I'll just download it to the desktop for now. Done. Um, and then what we'll do is come back, back to WinSCP. We will go to, um, the desktop and we will have the foundry zip here. Simply just drag it over into the foundry VTT folder here. It'll copy it over. It'll take just a couple seconds, depending on your connection. Um, and now it is there. So that, that file is there. Now what you can do is just rename it foundryvtt.zip, and now it's there. So now um, you can either unzip it here or do it here. I like to do it at the command line just because that's the way the instructions work, and that's kind of, you know, I don't know. I'm a command line guy. I like command line. So you can come in here and unzip foundryvtt.zip, and away we go. So there goes everything. So that will take care of the 403 error that you've been getting. Um, that is now completely taken care of. And I can grab the Node.js. Oops, don't need that. We need putty. Paste that. And you'll see there, warning software license requires signature. So now that is running on that IP. I can come over here, start a new one on port 30,000 and now it's asking for the license um, I can put that in there let me pause and look at the second question that we got just to make sure that I'm gonna cover it there okay the second question I just recently got was how do you get players to connect to your game okay so I'm gonna go actually go back to my um, normal installed game and walk through that one and that way I can delete all this. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to pause this recording and knock that out. And then when you see me, I'll be back on my normal game. Hold, please. Okie doke. So I've got my um, regular Foundry stuff running that I use for my personal use and stuff. Um, so here's a world I created. And what I'll do is I'll just come in here and we can show you how to uh, create users and let them log in. So we're going to uh, launch world. Game Master. Looks like there was a migration for a new version. So now what we're going to do is go in here over to the settings and we're going to configure players. And there's one for the Game Master. Now I personally like to give myself um, password so that if my game is permanently running and I have it launched that no one else can log in and see all the stuff I have planned for them um, but if that's you plan on shutting it down you don't need to worry about that so now you're gonna create an additional user and let's say that player's name is John you can give them a password if you want to and then they have options here for permissions so they can have no permissions which is just gonna let them look at it uh, player allows them to interact with a character trusted allows them to have some limited functionality like editing journals or pulling in um, uh, characters or being able to bring in images things like that assistant is basically uh, an assistant game master so they have uh, slightly pared down versions of what the game master does and then full-on game master so we'll do that we'll create another one and we'll call her Lucy uh, and you can do that for as many players as you have uh, and then you'll launch your game session and then what you'll do is now that this game session is launched and running um, you can give them the link which is just that IP address from your uh, Amazon instance with the colon 30,000 after it so let me just pop up a notepad here real ad you don't even need it. I can just type it in won't let me type it in um so yeah it's just the ip address with the colon the two dots and then thirty thousand, 
and then it'll get them to this screen right here and then they can choose their thing and join and then it will prompt them to select a character so something that you may want to do because there are no characters built here is you want to create a character for them while you're logged in as the game master um, and we'll get to uh, character import coming up soon um, from D&D Beyond if that's how you want to bring your characters in um, but if you don't give them anything it won't allow them to in, uh, assign themselves to a, a, uh, a character, a token, an actor, and they just won't really have full functionality. But that's that's how you get them in: is you create their name, um, you give them a, a, an account, so to speak, and then you give them that URL, which is just the IP address from from Amazon, and the colon thirty thousand, and then let them log in from here. If if you have a password, they'll need the password. Um, once they have it, then they should be able to log in. So if they can't, something else might be going on, and I'm not quite sure what that is. So that takes care of the two recent comments we've had on this, and that's um, fixing that 403 error with a workaround using WinSCP and showing you how to get your players logged in. So thanks for checking in, and we'll have a new video coming up soon, I hope, where we're going to get into the VTTA um, stuff, which is a couple different packages, and one of them is D&D Beyond, and how to bring in lots of different stuff from there. So it's a really cool one. Probably dedicate an entire video to it, and we'll go from there. So thanks for coming in, everybody. Remember to hit that um, subscribe button and turn on notifications. And yeah, any questions, fire them away in, in comments. Like always, if you like podcasts and you're a fan of true crime and D&D, and Check out our podcast, Vice and Villainy, and uh, let me know what you think. So take care, guys. Have a good one.